and welcome back. We have a match 11 of day one of the finals of Alliance tournament here. We have Solar Fleet versus Panda Team. And um, strangely, we have Maktep of Solar Fleet in their flagship, uh, Fiat Lux, the Balkhorn, um, sat on about 20% structure. It looks like he forgot to repair his ship from last week, by the look of it. Um, strange, but hey, it's there. So, Solar Fleet fielding uh, Balkhorn, two Macarials, a Guardian, two Kitsunes, two Keres, and a Daredevil. And from Panda Team, we have a Loki, three Ishtars, no Neros, three Purifiers, and two Hounds. Uh, <laughs> I hope Solar Fleet is able to move those frigates out, or this could be a very short match. Yeah, this could get very, very ugly indeed. And what do you suppose is going through Maktep's head there? I think he is just so incredibly confident in his team and his setup that he figured that he will never even approach structure. I, I'm not sure if I've ever been on the balls that much, but... Uh, props to you, Master. Uh, I bow down to you if you win this match. Wow, absolutely. I mean, that is, um, yeah. <laughs> I can't even think of why he would have done that, to be honest. Um, yeah, so we have straight away um, an absolute heap of Warrior 2s on the field for, um, for Panda Team. We're not seeing a whole ton of drones other than those Warrior 2s at the moment. Perhaps uh, going, deciding to go right for those carries. With all those drones on the field, perhaps uh, Panda Team is a little bit hesitant to bomb at the moment. Or maybe they just did, saw something in their formation that they didn't like and are holding those bombs back for the moment. Yep, it would look as if they're doing, uh, doing so. Um, the Panda Team is, uh, is spread out pretty wide, actually. Um, again, uh, Solar Fleet have also spread out now, so the bombs really aren't going to be that effective if Panda Team decides to use them now that the start of the match is over and done with. It's certainly an interesting use for the bombers. I mean, they're not really a one-trick pony, so to speak. They do have an incredible amount of volley damage with those torpedoes, and they do ha they generally have a generous number of mid-slots, so uh, I would imagine that a good majority of Solar Fleet is dampened out at this point. We're seeing some damage incoming to Shadow Zor in his Ishtar, but a ton of damage just incoming to Solar Fleet at the moment. Nothing has died so far, I believe, but uh, Magtep, you know, sorry, he's on fire because of his, pe his two movement penalties last week. Um, not a whole lot of damage going either way. That Solar Fleet Kitsune barely hanging on, it seems, but it seems that... Panda team has changed its damage away from it. Yep, and it's it to um, be repped up. It's interesting to see actually Maktep's ship here from Solar Fleet, uh, Fiat Lux, a Balkon that they're piloting. Um, absolutely immense fitting on that thing. It's somewhere between 9 and 11 billion isk worth of kit. Um, I mean, he has like offers a Weber fire on board there, two Corpus X types, X type large armor repairers. The best you can get. Um, yeah, pretty much the best you can get. So, um, wow. You can see there, absolutely clone and just a massive amount of armor back. He's got assistance from that Guardian as well. Um, and even with such immense structure damage, I think he's going to be very difficult to take unless they can get either some EW or he's, some Cap He's warfare. being overwhelmed pretty readily at this oh, point. Oh, there he goes, uh, in fact, yeah. Wow. Panda, Panda team able to, a, a, able to issue out an incredible amount of volley damage. I believe that Loki for Panda team might uh, be taking the place of a Claymore um, running running command links at the moment. It doesn't seem to be doing a whole ton of DPS. It's interesting those Ishtars really need the maneuverability to get the to position and move the drones. And Magtip in the nine billion isk nine to eleven billion is Balgorn is extremely, extremely close to dying. Uh, less than two percent structure left. Uh, perhaps his folly will be his Oh and defeat. there he goes. <laughs> in excess of ten bill down the drain there for Solar Fleet. That's uh one of their cornerstone ships, their flagship Fiat looks out of the game. Um, wow, yeah, that's uh, not uh, not the tank I was expecting for such a valuable and very well-fitted ship. Uh, it looks like Panda Team is about to lose its Oneros. Really, uh, it's it's unusual the choice of ship they're using, as the Oneros really is requiring quite a bit of tanking support from its from its allies, and you're not seeing many support ships like the. Uh, like the Dramio able to, on the field able to keep it alive, so I'm not sure if that Oniris is going to be able to hold on for very long. The Guardian for Solar doing an impressive job keeping keeping up the the E War frigates of Solar Fleet. Uh, perhaps it may be too little, too late, as uh, Zeos of Solar Fleet in 
its first Mercurial about to go down. Yep, and it's uh, there we go. <laughs> and Neros off the field for um, for Panda Team. Um, wow, it's going to be interesting to see how this works out now. The uh, vast bulk of the DPS for um, for the Solar Fleet Team off the field now. Uh, well, a big chunk of it at least, and uh, another third of it about to uh, about to go down also. Um, as Zaos of Solar Fleet there and his Macarial uh, starts to bleed into structure. Um, the Guardian actually for Solar Fleet still completely untouched. Um, it's just interesting to see um, how this how this is going to change things because uh, you can see there a lot of Panda team now starting to take damage. The damage a little bit spread out and a lot of EW um, in the form of those two Keras and two Kitsune on the on the side of Solar Fleet. Um, very heavy uh, ECM from those two frigates. They're very underestimated given the size of their hull. Um, those, uh, those bombers seem to be extremely vulnerable now without that Oniros on the field. Uh, and still quite a lot of e-warfare, as Verone has just mentioned. Uh, it looks like damage is still being spread quite heavily. However, uh, a large portion of DPS can, uh, can also be uh, given over to the Ishtars, which don't, aren't necessarily reliant on that Oniras exclusively for its tank, as they are quite maneuverable. And with the with the Loki acting as a com uh, as a command ship in all probability, uh, their maneuverability is even greater. Than that. Yep, we can see there one Macario left for Solar Fleet now. Um, nice close-up shot there of one of the little uh, Keras, the one remaining Keras from um, from Solar Fleet. One Kitsune there taking an absolute battering. Um, as I was saying earlier, very underestimated uh, electronic warfare frigate. Um, low points value um, and very effective in the way they deal out uh, EW. Able to get under the tracking of a really heavy ship, such as a battleship. Uh, uh -huh. It looks like Panda Team may have lost their edge in this match, the Loki going down in a, a very, very rapid explosion. Um, we saw them shift targets away from the bombers quickly onto the Loki and then back against the uh, third third purifier. We still have three bombers on the field for Panda Team. Yeah, you can see there. It's two of the Ishtars taking fire as well for Panda Team. Um, it's still difficult to call. The Guardian pilot, De Grant of Solar Fleet, is doing an absolutely outstanding job of keeping that remaining Mac alive. Um, again, top job with uh, keeping Torp and the uh, the Kitsune alive as well. Um, and I think that's probably uh, what's holding the vast majority of the DPS off from those two bombers. Um, I think the, the Guardian pilot's outstanding play, um, keeping that material alive, is really could be the difference uh, in at least prolonging this match. Yep. But that when that material as goes speaking. down. Oh, just as we're speaking, there yep. we're losing that mark. Um, that's pretty much all of the DPS for the Solar Fleet team out now. Um, still three Ishtars, uh, fielding Bouncer twos and Guard twos on the field for Panda team. So um, yeah. This, uh, this looks as if it's gotten very ugly for Solar Fleet very quickly. This seems to be just now a battle of, of endurance um, and how quickly those Ishtars will be able to perhaps change targets, which is really uh, their major downfall. Those those drones really not conducive to rapidly uh, changing, changing targets uh, as they're not quite able to keep up with those frigates from Solar Fleet, which are quite well spread out, but not out of the Guardian's range. Uh, Guardian doing a fantastic job. Um, perhaps, um, perhaps Panda Team will be able to compensate for that that Guardian. Uh, I'm not sure if that's likely, as the Guardian's rep actually starts at the end of its module cycle, not the beginning. So that slight delay when they're able to change targets may be just enough to give them an edge. But I'm not 100% sure about that one. Yeah, but at present it doesn't actually look as though that Guardian's taken any fire whatsoever at all. All of the uh, the DPS remaining for the Panda team actually focused on trying to drop those two electronic warfare frigates, the two Kitsunes on the field, um, Tech 2 Griffins. Um, wow, Guardian pilot just clawing all of the armor back there on uh, the Solar Fleet Kitsune. He's doing an absolutely awesome job. It looks as if they've now switched their, their DPS. Uh, from the Kitsune to the Guardian to try and get rid of him because he's actually that effective. And uh, Soundwave, an interesting fact for you, pandas eat shoes, shoots and leaves, so you should definitely keep that in mind next time you go out on a date with a panda. It looks like the last bomber for Panda Team has gone down with the Ishtars in varying states of, of armor and shield eight, uh, hit points. I'm not sure if there's enough damage being able to be rapidly switched between uh, 
the Solar Fleet frigates at this point to really beat this team. I believe that the Daredevil may be able to put a, a quite an impressive amount of DPS on those Ishtars, and their speed is will really be negated by them as as the Daredevil's uh, web bonus and its incredible blaster bonus up to upwards of 400 DPS. And uh, sorry to interrupt, but it is actually interesting to note that these Ishtars are actually Lishtars. They are laser Ishtars. That is they absolutely have light, fantastic. Um, it looks like they have um, some form of dual, it uh, looks like dual light pulse lasers, twos on board. They're shooting Scorch. Uh, yes, and they are shoot. They are indeed shooting Scorch. Um, they, have they have their sentry drones out. They've moved away from their sentry drones, and they're defending themselves by running EMP smart bombs um, to try and keep these guys up there. Um, right now, right on top of the Guardians, one of the Ishtar, two of the Ishtars, in fact, from um, from Panda Team, right on top of this uh, this one remaining Guardian. Perhaps um, trying to overwhelm his his tank at this point. Uh, believe they have changed out from those from those sentry drones or they're just trying to put that impressive laser DPS right on top of him. Uh. Yeah, you can see there, um, wow. Laser Ishtars, you saw it here first. And it actually looks as if, um, yep, they have just abandoned their sentry drones by the look of it, um, and they've just dropped a huge heap of Valkyrian Warrior Twos out of those Ishtars um, to try and to break through this Guardian. Those should definitely be able to track uh, those frigates and we have already lost one kit soon. Uh, perhaps a Guardian getting distracted by those pretty, pretty lasers. And we're about to lose a Daredevil, it seems, unless a Guardian wakes up again. Um, perhaps really just drop the ball on this one. Wow, I'm still astonished that people who think that Lishtars are actually a good idea. Um, wow, that's... Apparently they are. They, s they seem to be making just enough difference. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I probably, uh, I probably would have gone with like at least light auto cannons rather than lasers just yeah. to conserve the cap on a Galenti hull but yeah it's interesting to see that second kitsune there um down for uh for solar fleet uh, this has actually turned into a little bit of well kind of a weird strange slug fest a it's little of a, a lull fest it's a little bit of a lull fest at this point i think panda team didn't turn on those lasers until the last possible moment just to to distract us so, uh, yeah, I mean, that is absolutely outstanding. I think they're just uh, trying to confuse what's left of Solar Fleet with their awesome stupidity <laughs> and fitting lasers <laughs> on a Galenti hull. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's worked out for them. Um, the DPS is there if they have a very highly skilled um, laser-based pilot, uh, energy turret-based pilot in their corp. Um, it's just it's just a really strange thing to see um, to see a Galenti hull. Fire and pulse lasers, and but it's a little bit pretty. It, it it does match a little bit with the with the Ishtar Jesus on the hull. Now it's um wow you can see there as well the uh, the Ishtars are actually all mute in the frigates um so they do have mutes on board as well um yeah it's it's an interesting use of the Ishtar hull that's for sure. That, absolutely, and it appears that one of the Ishtars is slowly slowly uh, going below fifty percent armor just. Very little DPS uh, available on the field. I believe that uh, Jim Malkavian in the Solar Fleet Daredevil is hesitant to get in range, and personally, I would be too. As soon as he gets in range and webbed and neutered, uh, I don't think the Guardian will be able to keep him up. But unfortunately, to put the, his very respectable DPS on those Ishtars, he must be in range. So I'm not sure where any DPS would really come from at this point unless uh, the carries has well, one or two It's guns. kind of It's kind of a, a moot point at present because unless um, Solar Fleet managed to kill at least two of these Ishtars with two frigates, um, they're not going to do anything purely because of the fact that they're behind on points. Yes, um, they did put, they, Solar Fleet did put three faction battleships on the field and really put themselves uh, <laughs> at risk. Yeah, we can see their um, Guardian, roughly half armor. Um, the DBS seems to have slowed down somewhat. Uh, the three Ishtars remaining for um, for Panda Team. It's just I think it's just a matter of time of waiting to see who they want to kill next, basically, because um, this uh, what's left of the Solar Fleet team is now going absolutely nowhere. I'm not sure necessarily if they can kill anything next. I, I believe if they would, they probably would have already broken that Guardian. And it's slowly going down in armor, but perhaps not not at a rate that I would expect from the amount of damage these Ishars can, should theoretically be able to put out. Maybe they're just getting one of the Ishars into position to loot 
uh, Mac Kep's wreck. I mean, an impressive amount, amount of ISK probably still in the field, and unless they they loot it before the end of the match. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised at all if that's what they're doing, if they're trying to get a hold of um, <laughs> Smiling Ishtar, <laughs> Best Ishtar, indeed. And it would be wonderful if we could get... Can we get a just face a, shot Yeah, of just it? a face shot, a really nice close-up of those Ishtars and just how happy they are because they've uh, they fitted them with uh, lasers. They're I mean, look at that. Oh, look at him smiling. How nice is that? That is a perfect oh. smile. They, they, they love those lasers, man. Happy Ishtar is extremely happy. <laughs> yeah, it's... Um, no, it's nice to see even the ships in the Alliance tournament enjoying themselves. And absolutely, probably not as much as we've been enjoying ourselves. I mean, Reykjavik has been quite incredible to us. What do you say? Ah, absolutely. It's uh, it, There's been a, a few close calls. Um, a few of the expert team have been extremely drunk on several occasions. Um, but we have the guiding hand of CCP to guide us out here, and it's uh, it's been good fun so far. And it absolutely has, and it looks like they have started to put more damage on that Guardian slowly, slowly going down. Uh, I'm hoping that this match either time runs out or CCP Claw decides to... I'm not slapping for one for 100 mil. You need way more than that, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yes, it's not going to happen. You would need to offer him way more than that because I would bite his face if he did so. Anyway, we do not have uh, any notification for in local from CCP Claw. Five about minutes remaining. Uh, I believe Panda Team should have had enough time to loot Maktab's wreck. Sorry, Master in Russian. Master's wreck. Um, Really just poor foresight by him to not to rep himself. He did get double penalized last week, and I believe that he just didn't rep himself from last week to this one. Really negligent from, from such a haughty player. Yeah, and look at those two Ishtars. We've got a nice shot there showing how happy two of those Ishtars are now, uh, killing that Guardian, and he is down. The Guardian's finally left. down. But, um, yeah, I mean, it by no means a convincing victory for Panda Team, but... Um, an interesting match, nonetheless, given uh, a few random turns of events. An unusual setup from Panda Team. No, no bombs from from the outset. Uh, do you think that a bomb la a quickly timed bomb launch, would have made a difference? I think that it probably would. Yes, if they could have, um, if they could have gotten um, the bombs down straight away and got rid of those Keras and um, got rid of the Keras and got rid of um, the Kitsun straight away got them out of the way, I think that they would have lost or lost a lot less ships. I think they would have had a way more convincing victory. Uh, I believe, I mean, Panda Team are uh, certainly competent with bombs. I've, I've seen them use them firsthand uh, within Fountain. They're, they're very good at that. And the last carries for Solar Fleet uh, approaching structure, we have plenty of drones able to catch up with it from the trio of Ishtars remaining. An unusual setup from Panda Team. Maybe it would have worked in the past, but I really hope not to see it again. The yep. the combination of drones with b with bombs is, is really is really iffy to me. I, well, I can't see that working very well. I was absolutely Baffled. loving the fact that Solar Fleet was probably going to go through, probably going to do well because they've given a really good show on so far. And wow, look at how happy that Ishtar is! Oh my god, I, that's outstanding. But well, well, look, he killed he killed eleven bill. Yeah, he looted a. a Two Centus X type reps and a Tobias Web, probably totaling near four to five build, the bulk of, of the cost of that flagship. And finally, Panda Team can go home to eat their shoots and leaves back to you, Soundwave. <laughs>